This video will explain hypertext pre-training and prompting of language models. This study is motivated by the textual information contained in the HTML and also kind of the CSS and the way that you say decorate a div or a, a list element or these kinds of things with classes and IDs and maybe some other kind of JavaScript uh, source that might be integrated in the HTML pages. This kind of information that's intrinsic to these web pages. We have data sets like the C4, the uh, Colossal, Common Crawl, Corpus, that's used to train models like T5 where you clean away all the HTML and then you just train on the text data from these web pages. But what they're showing in this uh, paper is that keeping this HTML can be a really useful signal for pre-training these language models. They can easily gather this at scale. After filtering the data, they end up with 23 terabytes of data. And then it's really useful for zero shot summarization in which they set the new state of the art by filling in these title tags. So you imagine you scrape the whole internet and you get all these articles where they have the title of the article contained in these uh, title HTML tags, and then you have the body tags for HTML and so on. So using this uh, prompting of having the title tags, they're able to achieve a new state of the art in zero shot summarization and overall show some more benefits of training on HTML data in addition to the text from doing these web scrapes. So originally the web pages contain a lot of boilerplate code for uh, running the websites. So they clean this and then they have an average of 94% of the characters are removed from the original web page, but still close to 85% of the documents fit into a token window of 1,024 byte pair encoding tokens. So they're gonna use this data to train a BART model with 400 million parameters for 330K steps on 256 GPUs with a large batch size of 8,192. The authors make another interesting modification to the pre-training objective used for mass language modeling. So instead of just masking out an intermediate uh, span of the text, like how SpanBert masks out, say, these four contiguous tokens and then just replaces it with a single mask, they're gonna provide the hint for, of the number of tokens that have been masked out, and they're gonna add some noise to this. They describe how they have this epsilon uh, noise parameter and how they schedule that for having some noise with the uh, exact count of the tokens in the mass. So uh, say if it's really 12 has been masked out, some distribution of 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, some distribution of how you're signaling what the number of tokens that have been masked out for structuring this pre-training objective. So there's been a lot of research in exactly this kind of pre-training objective, these subtle little changes going from masking out single tokens to masking out spans to say the Pegasus objective where you mask out entire uh, sequences, maybe ideas like Electra where you have this generator discriminator kind of context. And overall, this is the new addition they're testing, adding this uh, signal to how many tokens have been masked out in the prompt. So here's an example of how the size hint can produce different generations for filling out the prompt. So we have this body that describes this uh, news article, and then we have in the uh, paragraph heading the title of the article or some way. So instead of having title tags, we might have these head tags and see a paragraph that describes the title of the article like that. So we have the mask X and then we replace the X with these different kind of sizes to get different general uh, generations. So at five, we have three Egyptian journalists are being tried. At eight, we have a different way of wording it, 12 and 15. So we see how these uh, size prompts can result in different generations for this task of zero shot summarization. Another interesting part of this is what the authors call auto prompting, where they uh, put these mask tokens in between these sequences and then the model generates this HTML code around the uh, around the text because this is the syntax it's used to seeing with the, these spaces this kind of formatting and replacing it with something like this so in this case the zero shot uh, transfer that's being done is it's now labeled this uh, div with a class so it's calling this the post body entry content these are say these would render say like the CSS styling that styles this paragraph and maybe just turns it into something like this text box uh, controls the font size font family these kinds of ideas so they're using this uh, auto prompt to generate a class that might be descriptive of the text. These are the results on zero shot summarization, setting the state of the art over the previous Pegasus model where the Pegasus masks out a, a whole sentence in the pre-training objective compared to this uh, idea of using the title tags to guide the zero shot summarization. And then this is another uh, task of table to text generation. So this is where you have a table, which is say formatting in the angle brackets uh, table tags. And I think you have like uh, TD for the table column, table table row, there are HTML tags that describe these tables basically. And so you can use this to facilitate this transfer from table to text generation. So then another example where they don't quite uh, beat the GPT-3 models is uh, zero shot classification where they're using these, but they still do perform pretty well 
uh, with this new objective. But the idea is that you use these class and ID tags to guide the uh, classification of the paragraph. So kind of an interesting idea. I'm not sure exactly how these paragraphs are labeled according to their topic and so on, but that's kind of the idea of using the signal for zero shot classification, using the HTML tag signal for classification. These are the results generally showing the effective of the representation when fine tuned for uh, the glue benchmark bench has uh, the three F uh, modification to the fine tuning that shows a significant advantage, uh, at least on the MNLI, natural language inference tasks, and then also I think this is reading comprehension and some of these other tasks. Uh, this is from this other paper on really studying these, uh, how you fine tune language models, preventing uh, representation collapse and transfer learning is what I think the title is. I recommend checking out the paper uh, for more details about that. So then here's this other idea. Uh, there's a paper titled, How Many Data Points Is a Prompt Worth? That looks at how much uh, you save in the fine tuning uh, computation by having these prompts, how much uh, data you avoid needing to additionally collect to reach the same performance by having the inductive bias of a good prompt. So we have better prompts because we have these HTML tags, and this is showing a huge advantage in the data efficiency comparing this uh, hypertext model with Roberta, T5, and Bart Large. And then this is showing that you still have these uh, gains even without a verbalizer, and a verbalizer being how you map from the vocabulary of the language model into the downstream classification task when you're doing this transfer learning fine tuning. This is another interesting paper in this line of research around learning from the internet. We have papers like Clip where you have these noisy, image text caption pairs from say Google images or just again scraping all the image tags from HTML where you have the alt text uh, label on these image HTML tags that you could use to supervise an image text learning algorithm and then use that as a form of noisy weak supervision. So weak supervision is generally a paradigm of supervised learning where the labels aren't really carefully designed. They could be algorithmically labeled or you have some kind of label propagation algorithm or it could be like this learning from the internet thing where you're just kind of scraping it and you have some source but it's really not that carefully annotated. Another decent example of this might be the uh, YouTube how to 100 million data set where uh, you have these YouTube videos and then you have the automatic speech recognition systems that caption them. So then you have these vision language, uh, vision language video text sort of data sets that you have this learning from the internet, internet scale data. And when you have these massive data sets, it tends to perform pretty well with deep learning. Thank you so much for watching this explanation of HTLM, Hypertext Pre-Training and Prompting of Language Models, an interesting case showing how we can use the information contained in the HTML of these web documents in addition to just the text contained in them. Thanks for watching this video. Please stay tuned for the rest of the AI Weekly Update series, and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos. Mm -hmm.